Okay, here we have a video for lab two, the boiling point experiment. And in the boiling point experiment, the first thing you need to do is figure out what size glassware to use because it depends on how much sample you use. When you are boiling something or refluxing something, you want to make sure that whatever size you use is about half full. So here we have a 500 mil round bottom. We wouldn't want to put 25 milliliters of liquid in that because it wouldn't have enough liquid in it to heat up all the glassware to get a good distillation going. So here we have a 100 mil round bottom and I'll fill it up about half full with some water just to demonstrate what we need to do in this experiment. And so once we get our sample in the round bottom we can clamp it with a, a three-fingered clamp. You can raise the, the thermal well up so it's close to it. It can touch or it can be a little bit away from it. It doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you always have a lab jack in your setup so that if you get the thermal well too hot you can lower the lab jack away and you can easily lower the heat to your sample. Now whenever we do a distillation we always want to make sure we add boil easers or boiling stones and it only takes two or three of them to add. Get a couple of them from the the jar, put them in your sample, and then you can give that to everybody else in lab because everybody will need one. And then on top of this, we will have the adapter to go down to our condenser. Now as we build this, we want to make sure we have a firm foundation for all our glassware. The round bottom we start with will be clamped to the ring stand and gravity will hold the, the distillation adapter in there so we don't need to put a keck clamp on it but the, the condenser gravity will not help us with so we need to make sure we use a keck clamp to hold it in there. We need to have our thermometer adapter and we need to put our thermometer in there. When we do that we need to be very careful about sliding the thermometer in and when you add it in slowly twist it and hold it close to the, the top of the thermometer adapter so that you don't put any force on the thermometer and end up breaking the thermometer. Okay? If you break the thermometer as you're pushing it in, it'll end up sending the thermometer through the palm of your hand and we don't want to have that happen in the organic lab. So what we need to do is make sure the bulb of our thermometer is down below the arm going to the condenser in the, the setup. If the bulb is higher than where up here where the arm comes off to the, the condenser, what will happen is your vapor is already starting to condense and you're not going to get a good boiling point temperature for your liquid that you're trying to, to distill. And then we'll have another adapter on here at the bottom of the condenser and these adapters look different. There may be the sidearm on the, the outside or it may be on the inside of the glass. It doesn't really matter. And then you'll collect this into another round bottom that looks clean. And then you can put a, a, another keck clamp on that holding it together. And then to make sure we have enough support for it we can put a clamp on our condenser to hold everything up to make sure everything's good and secure. Now when we do a distillation we need to have hoses sending water into our condenser. Push the tubes on as far as you can on both of the ends of the condenser make sure they're on good and tight so they don't fall off and then what you'll do is the lower end of the condenser will be the hose that goes into the faucet and then the upper end of the condenser will go into the, the drain of the sink that way as you're going along you will fill the condenser with water and then the water will run out to the, the drain. When you turn on the sinks it'll invariably happen that somebody in the lab will turn it on too high and it, they will end up splashing somebody in lab. It's okay if it happens, but as you turn on the sink, just turn it on a little bit. Whoop, got a hole in my hose. 
Okay, with the hole in the hose, what I need to do is snip off just the, the tip of the hose to make sure we get rid of the, the hole in the hose. And there are holes in some of the hoses. You want to be careful that you don't cut too far down on the hose because it'll make the hose too short. But put the hose back on the condenser and I'll get a paper towel and clean up my, my water spill. But we turn the hose on, turn the water on at the outlet, and when you're using the water, going through a distillation or a reflux, all you need is for the water to drip off from the outside end of the hose straight into the sink. You shouldn't be able to spray the water across the lab or you have it on too high. And if you have the water on too high, what will happen is the hose will come off of either of the outlet on the sink the faucet or it'll come off of one of the outlets on your condenser and it'll end up spraying across the lab and getting the person across from you wet and they won't be very happy with that. Now the thermal well that we're using doesn't have a dial on it so we have to go back to using a variac to control the, the current in our thermal well. So we plug it into the standard wall outlet, plug our thermal well into it, turn it on and then turn up the power to begin with somewhere in the 30 to 40 range and see what happens from there depending on what we're trying to boil it may not take much heat to get it to distill depending on what we have for our unknown in lab too. If nothing happens we can turn the current up more make sure that you have patience and give it time to heat up before you check on whether it's getting hot or not if you're not sure anything's happening to it, talk to your professor and have him come over and check. Sometimes, depending on what thermal well you use, we may end up blowing a breaker on the, the, in the, the electrical box in the lab. And if that happens, all we have to do is go over and flip the breaker and, and start it over again. So don't sit for a couple hours with nothing happening. Talk to your professor if after 20 or 30 minutes you're not getting any heat to your thermal well. And then at, once you get it to distill, the first couple of drops that distills you can take away and dispose of and then put another flask up here to collect the rest of your sample so that the four run you get rid of and then anything that distills from that point on you're, you're ready to use to keep for doing your refractive index to identify what your unknown is in lab two.